So now you're going to just tell me what are the problems. So first we're going to do, we're now doing primary homocysis disorders and first vessels. So tell me what you can have with vessels. Vessels. So, and, no, 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 we're talking about bleeding today. More, 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 we're talking about bleeding. So atherosclerosis is fine. Uh, so, let's, let's t tell me some inherited disorders. Would you know inherited vessel wall disorders? So there's going to be problem with a with, with, with connective tissue. So do you know some disorders of Marfan? Marfan is not bleeding so much. There's one better one, and it's called Ehlers-Danlos. Ehlers-Danlos, do you know it? Ehlers-Danlos. You know what is Ehlers-Danlos? The skin, like, you know, they can grab it out. Unfortunately, the structure of their vessels is uh, they're more fragile, so they have particular typically. Okay. Another one is Randu Osler. Randu Osler. Randu Osler, you have teleectasis, teleangiectasis, like malformations of small vessels. So typically, you will see, like for example, red dots on the tongue. Randu Osler. They're rare, you don't have to know them well, but at least if, we, if someone asks for inherited disorders of vessel wall, Rendu Osler and, uh, uh, and, and Ehlers Danlos, okay? Okay, that's, that's special. But now, acquired ones. And I'm sure you can tell me many acquired disorders which are connected with uh, vessel wall quality. I, as you both, you said it before, now we said it. In other words, so you said, in other words, vitamin C deficiency. So remember pirates or sailors. So vitamin, every time you have vitamin C deficiency, you're going to have tetichias, you're going to have superficial bleed, epistaxis, vaginal bleeding, it's the same. It's just the same as if you would have something with thrombocytes. It looks just the same. But the problem is in quality of the vessel wall. What other, so vitamin C deficiency, obviously, very good. Hormone. What hormone destroys your proteins? You passed the exam, so what, what, what hormone, thanks to what hormone you are using your proteins? Cortisol. Cortisol. And what, what do we call the disease? Cushing's. Cushing's disease or syndrome, as you want. In both of them, you're going to have, uh, you consume uh, proteins, so you consume proteins also in your vessel wall. So that's why you're going to bleed also. So they can have to take care. Okay. Do you know some uh, special inflammations? And it's called IgA inflammation of the vessel wall. IgA vasculitis. And many of you maybe had it. It's common. Henex online purpura. It's pretty common. It comes and goes, but it's EGA vasculitis. Again, you can have petechias, okay? And still, very general, everyone had pathology, so you know immune complexes, and you know these immune complexes get onto the, into the wall as well, and destroy the wall, so that's why any kind of immunocomplex vasculitis can have petechias, can have primary hemostasis disorders, okay? So immunocomplexes, okay? So, but especially vitamin C, remember, Cushing's, okay? and these special ones. So any kind of vasculitis can cause a primary hemostasis disorder. So these were vessels, and now still primary hemostasis, but the big, big part, and those are thrombocytes. And you can have two main, let's say, groups. And what will they be? It's gonna be decreased level of thrombocytes or failed function of thrombocytes. And what do we call the decreased level of thrombocytes? Thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. Topenia. And over here is going to be thrombo, thrombocytopathy. So first, and with the thrombocytopenia, there, there are two ends. One is there's a decreased production. So there's something with bone marrow, for example. Or increased destruction. Over here, sleep. Okay? Okay? So, and first, decreased, uh, so, or examples, decreased production. So, of course, you can all mention one disease which is very general in a way. We don't know the cause in 50%. You have pancytopenia. Oh, well, the one which is very, like, we don't know in 50%, aplastic anemia. So, aplastic anemia, and you were also right, of course. In aplastic anemias, but also leukemias, melodysplastic syndrome, 
it can it can come out that your uh, your thrombocytal level decreases and you're going to have thrombocytopenia and you're going to bleed. Okay. So, but in aplastic anemia, you know, in 50 percent we know the cause, like radiation, drugs, you know, some toxic drugs, you know, HIV or cytomegalovirus or parvovirus 19, it can cause the aplastic anemia. In other 50 percent, we don't know, but you see it in the in the blood smear. Okay. So aplastic anemia, very good. What else? So, so leukemia is okay, myelodysplastic syndromes. Remember alcohol. If someone is alcoholic, he can have decreased levels of thrombocytes. And he's going to have fatigue, yes. Okay? So, so let's say uh, that was decreased production. Destruction. Increased destruction. So anytime you have someone's going to have hypersplenism, He's going to destroy. Uh, he's going to destroy not only erythrocytes but also thrombocytes. What else? Again, in, uh, what about mechanical destruction? If he's going to have a artificial valve, he's going to destroy erythrocytes, but also thrombocytes. So artificial valves and whatever. Okay. What else? So increased destruction. Yeah, we, yeah, we, you can put their chemotherapy, very good. Any kind of chemotherapy, very good. And I'll, now I'll tell you four major ones, and I would like you to remember this because maybe you will see them at the hematology. Four major ones which cause thrombocytopenia. Okay. Special terms, and which are they? So write it down. ITP, TTP, HIT. That's it of today, and help. So first, ITP. What is ITP? I'm sure some of you heard it already. It's called immune thrombocytopenia today. So as you can hear, there's autoimmunity playing a role in this. It's immune thrombocytopenia. The old term was idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. We don't use that anymore. They, they want you to know it's immune thrombocytopenia. The abbreviation is the same, they just changed the name. So it's immune thrombocytopenia. And this is very common. This is pretty common. And you have two main types. So ITP, we're doing ITP. One type, is especially in children, in small children, one to five years, suddenly they start to have the TPS because their, the amount of thrombocytes felt under 10,000. So they can have severe bleeds as well. It depends on the level. And the drop is isolated. And you're not finding anything else to it. The spleen is normal, everything is normal, and they have a isolated decrease of thrombocytes. In 2% they can die, okay? But fortunately, uh, in most cases, it's self-limited. It comes and goes. Typically, they have some virus before. It looks like diabetes mellitus, okay, in a way. Uh, in a way, but fortunately, diabetes won't like resolve. This will resolve, and but if it won't resolve, so you get what? You get prednisone, of course. You get prednisone, and if you're not able to help them too much, and they're still bleeding, and it's recurrent, the the last chance is splenectomy. Okay, so it's pretty severe sometimes. So remember, immune thrombocytopenia. One type is children. The other one, mainly older women or woman middle age. Unfortunately, with the woman in middle age, typically it turns chronic. So typically, at the end, it, it ends also with splenectomy. Okay. So remember, immune side uh, thrombocytopenia, uh, isolated decrease of thrombocytes, and they're bleeding. What is TTP? Thrombotic. Thrombocytopenic. Purpura, TTP. This is called Moscovitz. Okay. So this guy, it's the older term, Moscovitz. It was described by, I think, New York doctor on a 16-year-old girl in 1920s. And how does it look like? Remember, these people, they are prone to forming thrombi. It's a very severe disease, and 90% dies if you won't help them. If you're not treating them, 90% will die. TTP. Thrombocytopenic, thrombotic purpura. The, and the thing, where, where do they clot? Where do they clot? In small arteries. 
between arterial, artery walls and, and capillaries, so in the arterial system, okay? They clot. They have many clots everywhere. They can clot everywhere you want, in the brain, uh, any, 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 any place uh, you can come up with, okay? And the majority is clotted, but, but because they're clotting, they're using their thrombocytes, so they have also thrombocytopenia. And what is special about this is, remember, it's not turning on the coagulation cascade. So you're just, uh, typically they have only decreased thrombocytes, but the PT and PTT tests are okay. Remember, TTP. And now, finally, since 1990s, we know the cause. What is the cause? Yeah, I heard it. Who said it? What is the cause of TTP? And I still, I didn't tell you a secret. TTP is about von Willebrand's factor. And normally, von Willebrand's factor is made like a huge molecule, like a polymer. And you have a special enzyme produced by the liver, which is in your bloodstream, and it cleaves this huge von Willebrand molecule into small von Willebrands, which are normal. It should work like this. It's made like big von Willebrand, and you should have this enzyme, which is called? Adam Very good. Adam TS13. Adam TS13, which should cleave it. Unfortunately for the people with inherited TTP, the activity of this enzyme is decreased. So that's why they have a big mesh. They have a big, huge molecules of von Willebrands in their bloodstream, and that's why they are prone for thrombosis because this starts, starts the adhesion much more, and they have, they're having microthrombi all the time in their in their body. Okay, so it's a decreased activity of Adam TS13. <laughs> Moreover, if we talk about this Adam TS13, there's and this is like a regular people, like like older ones TTP. You should imagine older people as TTP. But there, there are serious infection, infections with small children. And they have some special toxin in them. And this, it looks very similar as TTP. And you had it in microbiology. And now we put TTP together with HUS, hemolytic uremic syndrome. Okay. And hem hemolytic uremic syndrome, it can happen to your children. So watch out. It's, it's not so... It's, we know now, for example, this infectious side is caused by, called, caused by Shiga toxin. So if you have Shigella, or if you have, very good, E, what's the number? 0157871587, oh, uh, okay. So if you have this special type of E. coli, which is able also to produce Shiga toxin, you can have hemolytic uremic syndrome. And both of these, TTP and HUS, have very similar triad. You have hemolysis, you have uremia because your kidneys and both of them are failing. Small children, with, uh, imagine, especially in children, bleeding is dominating. In us, bleeding is dominating, although they're first uh, clotting, okay? They, they're for, forming thrombi. Uremia and thrombocytopenia. Both of these have, uh, both of these have uh, this trait. The, then these have more like CNS problems, like strokes. These have especially bleeding disorders, mainly. And they both fail with kidneys, both of them. Hus is very dangerous. Uh, many children die on Hus. Okay? So, and, and, and we don't know the exact action of the Shiga toxin, but very likely somehow it inactivates the Adam TS13. We don't know. Or it protects... There are, I read some papers about it just recently, and we, still we don't know exactly what is going on there, but it has to do with the activity of Adam TS13. Either the, the activity is decreased, or von Willebrand's is somehow protected uh, against the Adam TS13 by Shigatosu. Okay? We don't know the exact mechanism. But remember, TTP and Hus come together, and the main player is decreased activity or action of Adam TS13. Okay? So that's TTP. Um, hey, what? How do you see the difference between TTP and DIC? We'll talk about it. I already told you. can figure it out now. I told you there's a special decrease of thrombocytes, but is, is the coagulation cascade turned on over there? 
No. So that's how you can tell. Okay. But very good question, actually. So hit. What is hit? It's heparin induced induced thrombocytopenia. Penia. So again, decreased thrombocytes. You know what is weird? You're giving someone as DDT or whatever, whatever the cost you're giving in heparin. So you want to stop clotting or and what you know what happens in it? It turns on thrombosis. So so th this is a this is a pathological reaction towards uh, towards heparin. And unfortunately, we see it more and more often. It starts to be pretty common because we're using more and more heparin. And again, immune system is behind it. We don't know the exact mechanism, but we know if you're giving someone heparin in five to fifteen days. Instead of uh, protecting the, the, the thrombus formation, the people uh, start to have DVTs and pulmonary embolism, and it's because of the heparin um, dosage. Okay? And more allergenic is the big heparin, less allergenic is the small, small heparin, the fractionated one. Okay? But the only thing you can do at this time is when you, s you see that someone is flooding on heparin, you have to, take, you have to stop heparin forever. And then, you, you have, for example, you can get some special drugs like the ones which block thrombin. Argatroban is one of the drugs. They're blocking thrombin, so, so blocking thrombin. It's called Argatroban. And now there are even blockers of factor 10 blockers. This is the only thing you can do in HIT. Very dangerous thing, we see it on IC units, on hematology, I'm sure you're going to see one. Unfortunately, if you're allergenized, then if you get, for the second time in the you can, you can call it in one hour. Very dangerous, so remember, hit. What is help? It's a, help is a complication of complication in a way. And the complication of complication is the complication of complication of pregnancy. What is a complication of pregnancy? What do we call that? Preeclampsia. We don't know the, why there is preeclampsia exactly. We know there is a, let's say, pathology in the nidation or placentation. There's something wrong with placentation. And somehow the placenta and uterus, they are, they are like sending some signals into the bloodstream. And what does it, what does it do, the preeclampsia? Pre during the pregnancy, you don't have hypertension, you're pregnant, and now, like 20 weeks later, you start to have hypertension and also proteinuria. And unfortunately, we are not as afraid of these, but as the name says, it's preeclampsia. And very typically, if the pressure would rise and the proteinuria would follow, then at the end, sometimes, before they get birth, what they can have? Eclampsia, which is nothing else than a... It's a... Grand mal seizure. It's a grand mal seizure. And obviously, if you're pregnant, it's not good for you, for the baby. So, and, and some women can die. So, you're afraid of preeclampsia. And unfortunately, in some percentage, I think like of 20% of women which have preeclampsia, they can develop help. And this is very dangerous because help means suddenly you will see hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes low platelets so they will bleed as well okay so help is a complication of the preeclampsia okay or some say it's a special type of preeclampsia again you're going to have drop of thrombocytes so very crucial thing over here now about this one if you look at these three you have thrombus first, thrombus, thrombus. Over here, you have bleeding right away because it's an isolated decrease of TP, yeah, on ETP. But still, one more, and I'm talking about TTP and HELP. TTP, HELP, and still also DIC. We're going to talk about it later. What do we have over here? We have a, some, one special term over here. That's what Maha. Everyone please remember Maha. Maha is micro microangio angiopathic 
hemolytic anemia. What does it mean, Maha? That means if a thrombus is formed in your artery, especially, or, or, or uh, arterioles, especially small ones, I mean, or capillaries, anywhere in the vessels, uh, basically, if there is a thrombus form, and my, it's a microthrombus, when the erythrocyte flies, and there's also a fibrin mesh, and it, when it cracks, uh, flies through it, it gets destroyed. What do you call the destroyed, deformed erythrocyte? Schistocyte or schistocyte, right? And this is typical what you see, and that's why you have also decre decreased levels of erythrocytes in TTP, health, and DIC. Okay, so please remember mine. Okay, so, so these were these were thrombocytopenias. And what about thrombocytopathies? What about thrombocytopathias? What could cause the thrombocytopathy? And now you can tell me inherited disorders. So there's something with thrombocyte, but there are receptors. So can you tell me? You're very good, but still that's uh, you're very that's that's very true. But still, I want to uh, now uh, mutations of the receptor. So mutation of one B receptor. What would you what do you call that? It's called Bernard Soulier. Bernard Soulier. Okay. And Bernard Soulier means it's very rare disorder, and you're gonna have, they're gonna have problems with adhesion, obviously. Okay. What about the other receptor? 2B3A. So if you have mutated this one, what do you call that? It's called Glanzmann. And they have problems with aggregation. And now, very good. Although it's not a problem of the thrombocyte itself, it impairs the function. And that is inherited von Willebrand's disease. So you can put it here very well. Although it's not a mutation of the, uh, I mean, of the part of the thrombocyte. So, what is von Willebrand's disease? And many of you, or some of you, can have it. You don't know it. And one percent of people has it. It's autosomal dominant. And the problem is either you have decreased levels of von Willebrand's, or malfunction of the von Willebrand. But uh, it ends the same way. And um, what are the main main problems? Majority have no problems. When do they have problems? When they take aspirin. If you combine von Willebrand with, that's not, not a good combination. Don't take aspirin. Typically, if they take aspirin, they can bleed more. They can have to take it suddenly. And that's the way I will, you will find now, okay? In the light forms. Then you have the severe forms, and of course, they have naturally, they, they, they are prone to bleeding, okay? Uh, what I told you, so what, what can you do? What, what, what drug you can, in the light forms, you don't do anything. By the way, maybe they are a bit protected in a way, because they won't form thrombus as easily as, as average. Okay? So maybe it's an advantage in a way, if it's life form. By the way, those of you who are like blood type 0, you have originally decreased, bit decreased levels of von Willebrand's disease. Maybe you're protected as well. Okay? But anyway, so if, if it's a life von Willebrand, you don't do anything. You just tell them to only aspirin. Okay? If it's a more severe form, how you will help them, and we talked about it at the beginning. You can give them desmopressin, remember? You can give them desmopressin, and you're going to boost up the von fun, Willebrand's factor, okay? So remember desmopressin only. Good. And now let, let's get to the acquired ones. So acquired uh, problems. Remember, alcohol, again, if he, he's drunk all the time, he can have not only thrombocytopenia, but also thrombocytopathy, okay? Uremia, if you have increased levels of urea, urea packs the thrombocytes and impairs their function, okay? Penicillin also packs the thrombocytes, so impairs their function, okay? So people on dosage of penicillin, they can have, uh, they sometimes, they, they can have prolonged bleeding in it, okay? And now let's get to drugs, so, so you can easily tell me now. Yeah, somehow it packs it, okay? There's lots of, Surra like, it surrounds the thrombocyte. It interferes with the function what surrounds them, okay? Yeah? Drugs, what drugs? <coughs> so you know it, aspirin. This blocks the acti activation. Is there a drug aiming for another activation, a special receptor? And we, I'm, that's why I mentioned it at the beginning. This is a thromboxan, let's say this blocks the COX-1, okay. 
But is there, I, I told you about the P2Y12, and what, what drug blocks this? And you use it a lot in, in, in heart surgeries and in, in MI. It's called clopidogrel, clopidogrel, okay? Or it's Plavix. So, <coughs> and typically if someone had MI, you're giving him combination of aspirin and clopidogrel, okay? So you're blocking the <coughs> tromboxan and this receptor. And third one, and this is a special molecule, and I really love this one, because it's made artificially, and it's actually a part of a immunoglobulin, or it's an antibody. And it's a fragment of antibody aiming for 2B3A reception, okay? And it's called apsiximab. So in all cases, when you have thrombus formation in the arteries, when you have atherosclerosis, whatever, you can use these drugs, okay? Apsiximab, okay? Yeah. So aspirin, clopidogrel, absolutely So you all now to be satisfied. TTP and DIC, and we still didn't do DIC. But can you tell me the PT, PTT, TBC, and and red blood cells? So so can you tell me the differences in TTP? How will be the PT? Very good. PTT. Normal, TBC, you're using an R RBC, no, 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 Maha, remember, Maha, remember, Maha, okay, so decrease, what about DIC, increase, increase, prolong, prolong, decrease, pure consuming thrombocytes, and I had to make this punchline this for the part of it, okay, so, Remember this, we're going to do a bigger table next time to compare it. Thank you very much. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.